So this lesson, we're going to fine tune our API to return back according to a category. So we're going to specify a category within our JavaScript and also whatever page we want to use. So we can do whatever page we want to use and it's going to build the endpoint URL, do the fetch request to the endpoint with the parameters. And then those are the pieces of data that are going to get returned back that are going to correspond. So right now we're requesting for page two and content of sports and the data that's being returned back from the endpoint is ID 11, 14, and 17. So let's see how that corresponds with what we currently have. So we have uh, sports, we have three items per page, and this is all set up within the API. So we've got a global value of three per page. We've got the sheet ID. So if we were to update this, then we'd have to redeploy the API, it would update the number of items that are being returned back. So you can fully customize the endpoint of the API, as well as to list out whatever current page we're currently on, the total pages that are available, uh, the status value, and also update and add to the API. Uh, we've also listing out all of the categories, and that's coming dynamically from the category sheet. So all of this is going to be covered in this lesson as we show you how you can fine tune and adjust your endpoint to return back the data to also chunk the data as needed according to the different pages uh, for what you're passing into the request parameters of the web endpoint URL. So that's all coming up in this lesson. So we're going to do another filtering of the data from the endpoint. So just as we filtered for the right category, we're also going to filter for the data and return it back if there are pages. So you might have multiple pages of data. So again, I'm going to duplicate this content. So we have a possibility that we have a lot of content coming back from the spreadsheet. And I know I've got all of the same data, but more than likely, if you have an endpoint, you're going to have lots of data there that's not going to be the same. So you might want an option where you can actually filter the specific data and that you don't just have everything being returned back. So we want to have a certain amount of results per page. So let's set that value up. And the same way that we checked for the E parameter for the cat finder, we'll call one and we'll call it page finder. And we're going to be returning back according to page, so PJ, PJ for pages, and returning back that value for the page that we want to use. And if there is no value for the page, so if it's uh, not being returned back as a page, then we are going to be returning it back as one instead of null. So we're always going to have at least one value being returned back for the pages. So we can save that. And just as we did the category finder, we can do the page finder. So this will return back the page that the user wants to request. So if we have multiple pages of data, then this will be able to filter out the different pages of data. So just as we've got for the category, we want to filter for just for the pages. So let's run some tests. And I'm going to actually update cat to be vampire. And I'll also update this to be let, so we can update the value of it and run a test on it. So we want to return back the set of data. So let's see what we've got currently for the object data. And it's not able to read the parameters. So let's uh, just set these values. because there's no E parameters being passed in for this test. So this is what it's returning back. And as we can see, it's just getting all of the vampire joke data. So we want to chunk this object data from the array. So we've got a length of the items of the array. So we can also loop through each one of those. So if we want to do, we could do a for each item and then log that into the logger. 
So we can each look at each row of data separately. And we need a way to actually filter through each one of these. So we're listing them all out, but we only want to list out the chunked data. So we want to be able to chunk the array data to a starting point and a maximum. So let's use splice in order to splice out the data that we want. So creating page and the number of items that we want per page. So it's going to create a chunk of three. And we want to only get back those values. So we want to create a start point. So this is where we're going to be starting our slice. So that's going to be whatever the value of page is times the value for the global object of page. So it will return back a starting position. And let's uh, do pj equals 2. So we start on the second page, and we're going to return three items from the second page of the available results. And then for the end of the slice, that's just going to be whatever the value of page is, because that's going to be the number of items that we're removing from the splice. So create a new object, call it my data. Take the data object, and this is where we're using the splice, because this is an array. So we've got our starting point, and then how many items we want to remove out. And let's uh, loop through the my data and see if we've got the right items there being logged. And this is starting at page two. So let's uh, run the application. And so we're starting out on, we're getting three items per page. We've got page two. So that means that we're starting at number six, but we're only returning back the relevant data, which is where we've got the vampire jokes. So we're starting with ID 19, 22, and 25. And those are the three items that get returned back. So then it should be different data if we've got a different page. So for the first page, and if the category is blank, Let's run the code. So we start out and we get four, five, and six being returned back for the first page. And that means that we got to account for the page in case it's zero. So we need to also do the multiplication, but the start is also going to be minus page. So let's run that one more time and just make sure that we're getting item number one, two, and three. Now if we change the page chunk, so if we're moving on to page two, and the reason I removed out the category is because it's a lot easier to see while I'm doing the testing to see if I'm getting page two, which would be four, five, and six. So it looks like page is working. Uh, there are a few things that we got to make sure that page is being returned back, that this is going to be a number that's returned back. And if it's not numeric, then we want to make sure that we are returning back a number. So whatever this result is, we want to make sure that this is a number. And if it is, then we're okay to return back the number from the page finder. And if this is not a number for the parameter that's passed in, then we have to account for that. So let's uh, convert this into a number. And if it doesn't convert into a number, then we're not going to return it back. So if num, then we return back num. Otherwise, we're just going to return back one. And then to test it out, let's remove out those testing variables where we're setting those and take the category and the page number and go over to the test deployments, copy the URL for the test deployment. And so we're going to set up the page 
as page number three. And we actually need to update it to return the my data object. And now let's uh, try that one more time. So now it's limiting the values that are being returned back. Uh, so let's once again get that test deployment ID, copy it, and we're going to add in just uh, page number three. So results from page number three. So it's starting at seven, eight, and nine ID that's being returned back. So that makes sense that that's page number three content. So it looks like the pages are working as well as the category. So now we can deploy it for the number of pages. Let's get a value for the total number of pages total. And that's going to be what we've got for the data object length and divided by per page. And we're going to wrap this using the math ceiling as we want this to round up. So round it up value. And let's take total pages and we're going to pass it into the output content. And where we've got the output content so far, we're just passing in data. So we're going to also pass in total. And that's going to be whatever we have for the total pages. Let's uh, refresh within the web application. So we've got a total of 14 pages as a total that are available for the endpoint. So now let's update our web application. So I'm just cleaning the code up a little bit so we've got less spacing. And now we've got a fully functional web endpoint API that we can connect to and we can specify which page data that we want to retrieve back. Uh, so let's actually deploy this. And we'll just call it pages done. And hit deploy. And we'll copy the URL once again. And minimize the window. Go back to where we've got the output content. And just make sure that we've got the right URL. So now we're only returning back three items. And we can also include into the URL the page. So whatever page value we want. So if we want to return back page three. So and pj equals, and then whatever we've got for the page value. So it's going to return back the endpoint according to the page value. So let's add one more option, and that's where we want to get the list of available categories. So we'll add that into the endpoint as well, just as we added in the pages. So we'll list out all of the categories from the page and list that where we're outputting the content. And I'll just call it get cats. And then this will return back the category contents. So we'll get the spreadsheet just as we did within the do get. We're also going to get the sheet by name and in this case it's going to get the and we'll get all of the rows of data that's contained within the sheet so the sheet that we're looking for is going to be the category sheet with the name of category we want to get all of the values from category and we want to slice it just as we did for the other one to get the data. So we really want to return back the actual data and then we'll do a return of the data. And categories, or we'll just call it cats for short. And this is going to be just using the get cats function. So save that and we'll refresh it. So within the endpoint, it's going to list out the categories within an array format. 
And the problem with this is that it's an array within an array. So we actually want to clean that data up. Where let's uh, create a temporary holder object. And then we're going to loop through the existing data. So using for each, we'll get each one of the elements. And so for holder, we'll push the element in there. And we're going to return back holder. So let's see if that cleans it up. Because we don't want to have the data in this type of format. So as you can see, when I make it larger, it's uh, nested arrays because that's the way that the rows work. So when we refresh, we just want to have one array of all of the data separately. So let's redeploy this as well. So a new deployment with categories and then just redeploy that. And I'll copy that new deployment ID into the web application. And go back over to the web application. So now we're going to be returning back the categories as well within the list. So in the original request, we've got the categories that are available, the data that's in there, and then the total number that we currently have. So we can create some pa pagination to loop through the different items. And then we can also create URLs with the categories. So that's how you can construct an endpoint and connect to the endpoint using JavaScript and using Google Apps Script to deploy your endpoint. Because we are constructing the object, we can include whatever data that we want within the object. So let's say, for instance, we want to pass through the category. We want to pass through the page number into the output content. We can do that as well, cat and page. So if this is useful within your endpoint, you can have whatever the current page is. And that's going to be represented with page and whatever the current category is. And that will just be represented with cat. So now when I update the endpoint, I'm going to have all of that information within the endpoint. So whatever the current page is and whatever the category is. So right now we don't have a category selected. So let's uh, redeploy it. So every time you make some updates, you need to do the redeployment of the web application because you can only connect to the executable using your endpoint. So you were not able to connect to the developer URL. So the developer URL for the web app is only for development. So copy that new endpoint. And let's uh, update that endpoint within the web application, save it, and we'll see what we get returned back. So now we've got whatever the current page is. So now we're sending over page number three. The category uh, is not specified. So let's uh, specify a category and see if we can return back just the content for that category. So this way we've specified the category in the endpoint for sports. We're returning back page three of the available category. So that's the current page. The total pages that are available for sports are four. So we could potentially loop through those. Uh, the current data that's being returned back for this value. And then all of the categories that we currently have listed within the endpoint API. And then, of course, you can customize the endpoint data as needed for your web application.